Every now and then you meet someone who speaks so well, he not only captivates you, but captivates the people around you. Now that is something that one can make money of. And that's precisely the man I'm meeting today. His name is Shankar Santiram. He is the founder of EQ Training and Development. Uh, and he is also one of the speakers at the recent BFM Enterprise Breakaway. My name is Syed Fredino Omar, and you are watching, and I hope I'm captivating you here, you are watching in person. Now, you can hear thunder and lightning happening around me. The gods must be as excited as I am to be talking to this man over here because, you know, the first time I met him, he was just captivating. You know, sometimes you have important things to say, but it's not just about that. It's also about the way you said it. So, I'm very happy to be able to share today's episode with Shankar Santaram. Shankar, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to uh, my house. Thank uh, you. Thank you. You know what? I, I suggest we better find cover yeah, before... Yeah. Uh, before it starts pouring down on us. But yes, you see, the first time I met Shankar, it was at the recent BFM uh, Enterprise Breakaway. Uh, and yes, he did have, ver uh, have very important things to say, but it wasn't just about what he said, but it was also about the way he said it. Now, the thing that I remember the most about what you said were two things. You said that, you know, to be successful in business, um, you needed passion and determination. Was that the way I said it? It was, it was, it was. <laughs> the it intonation was, was exactly that. It was that, you know, ah. that clenched N <laughs> that stuck to me. Um, and, and he's actually made a, a, a living, a business out of this. Um, you captivate people when you talk uh, and you share experiences and you, 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 you empower and enrich uh, their careers as well as their lives. Uh, and that's what you do in your business uh, at uh, EQ. Yeah. Would you say that that is a skill or is it a gift? When I was young, I used to, I used to watch a lot of television, as I do even now. I, <laughs> I, I spent a lot of my time watching TV. And one of the TV programs I used to enjoy in the uh, mid to late 80s was L.A. Law. Right. Many people my age group, the 40-something crowd, will remember L.A. Law. Mm -hmm. I used to watch this and I used to think, that's what I want to become. I want to become a lawyer. And uh, so when I was growing up, it was all about becoming a lawyer. <laughs> and, and my father, I think when he was young, my father was a, was a university professor. Mm -hmm. When he was young, I think his aim was also to become a lawyer. Mm -hmm. But because they came from a fairly poor family, they couldn't afford to send, uh, going to study law at law school as an expensive. I think that's your father having an opinion there. My father <laughs> saying, to stop talking about me, son, <laughs> as usual. But anyway, my parents were excited. Yeah, excellent, no? because I think I spoke a lot when I was mm -hmm. a kid. Um, I had a lot of things to say. Um, that's what my mom and dad say. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was very, I, I had opinions about everything. So I went off and studied law in, in, in England. And halfway through my law course, I decided, this is this, 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 nothing, <laughs> absolutely nothing to do with the glamour of that you uh, saw on LA, LA law. <laughs> law. Nothing to do with LA law at all. It was just horrendously boring being a lawyer. So I wanted to do something else with my life. And I came back home in, to Malaysia in 1993 after my law degree. And I was grappling around with what I should do. And uh, just before I came back to Malaysia, I was talking to an old family friend of ours mm -hmm. uh, who lived in England. And, in, and he, gave me some, he gave me very good advice. He said, if you want to be successful in life, find what you like. Find what you think you're good at. Mm -hmm. Focus on that and do it. Mm -hmm. That's what he told me. When I came back, I was grappling around going, what do I really like? Um, and I realized I liked the sound of my own voice. <laughs> I liked the sound of my own voice. <laughs> At the risk my of being the <laughs> ultimate narcissistic, uh, narcissist uh, on in person. But yes, carry on with this wonderful story. I like where this is but, going. <laughs> but that's how it was. You know, I, I came back and I thought to myself, okay, I don't want to practice law. What is it, what is it that, that inspired me? Uh, and throughout school, I'm, I'm from Penang originally, mm -hmm. and I went to the Penang Free School, mm -hmm. like which someone is the else. Best, yes, which is the best school in the world. Like someone but else I'm I sure know, just uh, on the table. <laughs> yes. um, so if you go to Penang Free School and you see the, the list of the winners of the Cheeseman Allocution Competition, I was the winner in 1988. Mm -hmm. So I did a lot of elocution, a lot of speaking in public. I did, I did those types of things. So I, I grew up um, experimenting with that. 
and I enjoyed. I enjoyed it. You know, you enjoy the adoration, ad- adoration. You enjoy the the clapping. You enjoy your friends coming and saying, "Hey, you spoke really well." And there. Yeah. So when I came back to Malaysia in '93, I was grappling around with what I wanted to do. I didn't really want to practice law, mm-hmm. much to the annoyance of my parents. I didn't want to practice, um, and uh, I thought the closest thing I could do to earn a living was to teach. So I went and started teaching law in a private college mm-hmm. in uh, in uh, Penang. That lasted for about a year, and then I joined another institution and became, you know, head of department. In the early 90s, private colleges of higher learning were all new in Malaysia. Yeah, that's right. So it was like this mushrooming of colleges. They didn't have enough teachers, qualified teachers. Today, you need to have a master's degree or a PhD to be employed in a good, reputable institution. Right. In 1993, you didn't. They took 23-year-olds like me, 22-year-olds, and said, <laughs> "Fine, teach," you know, because they had no no students. And I really honed that skill of being in front of a class and teaching. Mm-hmm. And I never, I never practiced law at all. I just went straight into teaching law to start off with. A-level subjects, and then I got involved in administrating and managing institutions of higher learning. You know, that's what I did. Um, the gods are just not helping today, no, are they? They're not helping. You know? <laughs> no, yeah. and technology yeah. is I in know. as well. Oh, that's my neighbor's car. Fantastic. <laughs> we do apologize, but Shankar is such a busy man that this is pretty much the only time I can catch him between uh, running training courses and flying off to uh, foreign places to... to for holidays and also for business ventures. Work. No, for work. For, yeah. work, for, for work, work also. We, 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 st- we, st- yeah. hey, we say work. You know. we, we say work. <laughs> we say work. That's, that, it's all about work usually. Right. Um, where were we? No, you were saying that um, oh, yeah, 23 year old. Right. This is what happens when you end up talking so much. You can't remember <laughs> what you're saying half the time. Yeah. You know? So, yes, you know, I, I, so they, I, I got involved in private education mm-hmm. and, I, and I stayed on in private education for a long time. Mm-hmm. I, I, I was in Penang uh, for a few years, then I moved to Malacca and I moved from teaching alone to becoming an administrator. I eventually became the CEO of a of a, uh, uh, an institution in, in Malacca. Mm-hmm. Uh, that institution, we went into partnership with um, the Otago Polytechnic in New Zealand and uh, we ran a lot of information technology courses. Since 1993, I, I got involved in private education. Mm-hmm. Finally, ending up in, 2000 and, uh, uh, in, in 2003, when I left private education, I was uh, the CEO of a college in, in Malacca. In Malacca. Let me tell you more about this college in Malacca, but should we go inside? Should we go inside <laughs> yeah. and uh, get away from this <laughs> But this is here? the first time I'm not the one ending the segment. You know, my guest is ending the, se- <laughs> the, ending the segment on my behalf, but I am going to agree with him because it is getting... As you can hear, very loud out here. So we're going to take it inside. So stay with us on In Person. Come, let's go. Ia internet gentian dan wireless Panggilan percuma Hiburan tidak terhingga Dan banyak lagi Semuanya untuk kediaman anda Ucapkan selamat datang Kepada Cara Hidup Baharu Dengan Maxis Home Setiap Isnin hingga Sabtu Gala TV membawakan anda Secara langsung 4.30 petang 10.30 malam Gala TV, buletin hiburan tempatan dan antarabangsa memaparkan perkembangan muzik, filem, teater, fashion, temu buat eksklusif. Gala TV, Isnin hingga Sabtu, 4.30 petang, 10.30 malam di Astro Awani. Berita segenap dimensi. Immediately, it's quieter. We've moved indoors. We've shut all the doors. So now, in this space... Uh, the camera crew, you'll find the camera crew, you'll find me, you'll find Shankar, and also you'll find all the animals in the back there, all the cats, because um, this is not only Shankar's home, uh, it's very beautiful, but it's also his office, as well as uh, the um, the practice of uh, Shankar's wife, Susie, who's... Uh, let, let, let me say this properly, he, she's not just a vet, no, is she? She's, she is a vet, but over and above being a vet, she's also the only... Certified animal acupuncturist in She's Malaysia. She's an animal acupuncturist, which is precisely why you can find lots of animals. This is, you know, my kind of place. Now, let's pick up from where we left off uh, outside uh, Malacca. That's right. Uh-huh. So I, 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 um, I got into private education, and I was uh, 
the CEO of this college and I spent a lot of time with students mm -hmm. and I realized that the most fulfilling thing for me was to help these young people unlock their potential. Yeah. And uh, we had 18, 19, 20 year olds who otherwise couldn't get into public universities or didn't have the financial resources to go into the big institutions. Uh -huh. They came to my institution and we inspired them. We got work for them. Uh, they did one year, uh, two one year certificate courses or two year diploma courses or three year advanced diploma courses. Mm -hmm. And we worked with local industries in and around Malaysia. Uh, in Malacca specifically, in the south of Malaysia, but also in Kuala Lumpur. We placed them at various places. We got decent jobs for them. Mm -hmm. And I found that that was my calling in life. Mm -hmm. I found that actually placing these students in these, these, the, this, these places of work and giving them hope. I used to get little notes from parents, little cards from uncles and aunties who said, mm -hmm. thank you very much, this kid was, you know, my, 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 my nephew was not doing much, but now after he's come to you or come to your institution, yeah. he's, you know, he's been inspired. Not only has he got a decent job, uh, but he can also look after his aged parents, for example. These are the types of things that took place. And I found that this gave me so much more fulfillment in life. Mm -hmm. This is how I got into this whole the training business as such because whilst I was doing this in the institution of higher learning in mm -hmm. the college we also got lots of requests from the companies and industries where we were placing these students right uh -huh. they, don't, they, they said hey your, ki your, your, your boys and girls your kids mm -hmm. such they're far more motivated than the other other students. Mm -hmm. How is that? So we sat back and thought, well, it's because you know not only do we provide them education, the educational background, but we also give them all the motivational stuff. We mm -hmm. teach them how to attend interviews. We talk to them about increasing their emotional uh, uh, quotient mm -hmm. and such, their emotional intelligence. Um, and they said, hey, why don't you come and do some courses for my staff here? Right. You know? Come in and run a short course on emotional intelligence. In those days, people always said, can you come and run a motivational course? People always yeah. called me a motivational speaker. Yeah. Which, at that time, I'm seemed sure like a... I'm sure you still get it now. I, I get it once in a while now. Uh, but it's kind of rudimentary when you say that I'm a motivational speaker. You know? Because that, by definition, means you kind of rile people up. You get them all wound up for a bit. You know, you rah -rah them. And then you let them go and then... And then things go back to normal. Yeah. That's what happens. I think I'm a bit more than just a motivational speaker. I, 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 I did more than just motivating them. What I did was I helped them connect with themselves. And this is good. So okay. these companies where my students were being placed, these, the, the CEOs and the directors were all very happy with the results that we were giving uh, to their staff as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like a little, you know, you have these little light, light bulb moments in your life. Yeah. I've had a few bad light bulb moments as well. You know, yeah. I've started off businesses which um, have not worked. So well, we'll, we'll talk about that in yeah. a bit. But then, but terrible, terrible hiccups. When I first started, the first private institution of higher learning was in was in Penang, my hometown. I stayed there, but I, I did the, the a huge mistake of going into partnership with family members. Mm -hmm. um, didn't work out. Uh -huh. I'm very naive. If you ask me whether I would do it again. I probably would because you know I did it because that is the only only thing I could do at the time. Yeah. Uh, but if I knew then what I know now, I'd be a lot more cautious. Cautious. I wouldn't be so trusting. I wouldn't immediately invite people. And also, you know, I had no money. That was my major problem when I started my first business, which was the institution. I had no money, so you begged, you borrowed, you kind of you know fell at people's feet, mm -hmm. and you were very much at their mercy. Mm -hmm. um, as I got older, I realized how to secure funds for businesses and how to do it properly. You know, so that, is a, that was a big mistake. It didn't last. Uh, my second venture was uh, the, the next college uh, in Malacca. Worked out very well. Whilst it was successful, when it was not so successful, it's very difficult again. Uh, so I also learned. And all this I learned at a young age. You know, mm -hmm. I was 23. I was 25. You know? And then I got excited. I, I like One of my passions is cooking. Mm -hmm. So I spent a lot of time cooking. As you can see, <laughs> I like eating as well. You know? um, and uh, when I went in Malacca, I also opened a restaurant, uh, which made a whole load of money the mm -hmm. first three months it was open. And then it nearly bankrupted me for the next two years after that. You know? because but what I'm getting from here is that you're not scared. No. Uh, from a lawyer to education to training to cooking uh, and I also know that you know you very publicly mentioned once before in an article which um, uh, was published you said you like manicures manicures and pedicures Absolutely. which is something not a lot of men would you know, admit to openly I, I, a fun afternoon for me is to go to my favorite nail studio in Bangsa <laughs> and, and give 
I have Dr. Mary who looks after my feet Dr. and my, Mary, yeah, I call yeah. her Dr. Mary. She looks after my, my, my hands and my, my, my feet, my nails. You know? uh -huh. Yes, I also, I also ended up doing a business in India, for uh -huh. example. I ventured out into India, which is real uncharted territory. Uh -huh. you know? and I was, uh, uh, yeah, it, it, well, for me, it was uncharted territory. And also in the mid, you know, in 2006, 2007, that's the time India was opening up and yes. people from Malaysia uh -huh. were going out. And for three years, I did that very successful. I had ups and downs. It gave me a great you know, learning experience. Uh -huh. Um, and I think I'm 40 now, and the last 20 years have been one wild ride of ups and downs. And that is why I've reached a point now I think I can go into a training program mm -hmm. and I could really tell my participants, hey, you know, this is what life is about. Yeah. These are because the things, that, lived yeah, these are the things that happen to you. Uh -huh. And uh, this is how you become successful in spite of the conditions. Right, okay. And that's, that's something that always stuck with me. A long time ago, I heard an interview by Viktor Frankl, who wrote the book Man's Search for Meaning. And he said that being successful is not, you know, you don't become successful because of your conditions alone. Mm -hmm. You must become successful in spite of your conditions. In spite of the conditions. That's, that's in spite of your conditions. Okay. And that's essentially what I think I'm trying to live. Mm -hmm. The life I'm trying to live is that. You know, in spite of all the things that, you know, I don't come from a very wealthy family. Mm -hmm. I come from a middle class family. My parents were, my father's university teacher, my mother was a school teacher. So we didn't have any, we didn't have, uh, there was nothing that we wanted, but we didn't, we were, it was not a lavish lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it, we didn't have great holidays. We, not, it wasn't everybody could fly. It, we couldn't go anywhere at mm -hmm. the time, you know. Coming to Kuala Lumpur uh, was the biggest highlight of, of my childhood. Yeah, you know that was the biggest holiday I ever had. You know? <laughs> um, and going to Kentucky Fried Chicken at the time was a major deal. Was luxury. It was, it was luxury. luxury. I, I completely was luxury. You know, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. I, Coming I from Penang, you know, there's yes, no, I know there exactly. was none of these fast food joints in Penang. We had to come to Kuala Lumpur for no, this before. Yes, yeah? yes, yes. Well, uh, well, we have to go for another short break right now. But when we come back, you know, I want to ask. You know, some of the things you mentioned earlier were simply quite amazing. Um, how you. Talk to people emotionally and stuff like yeah. that. So we want to understand how you do it and, and why you do it and Absolutely. you know what's the kick in it. All right, sure. so stay with us on in person. We'll have more questions for Shankar. Ia internet gentian dan wireless Panggilan percuma Hiburan tidak terhingga Dan banyak lagi Semuanya untuk kediaman anda Ucapkan selamat datang Kepada Cara Hidup Baharu Dengan Maxis Home Friday Technology plays an integral role In every aspect of our lives At Gadget Nation We embrace technology Gadgets and video games Join me, Adam Carruthers, and the master gamer, Avery Score, on our expedition in the world of technology. Find us on Facebook and Twitter, and share your thoughts about the show. Gadget Nation, Season 4, every Friday at 9.30pm, exclusively on Astro Awani. So, yeah, we were talking about uh, wild ups and downs. Uh in Shankar's life uh, in the last segment. So we're going to well basically you know, continue with a uh, wonderful story of your life. Uh, amazing things has, uh, has happened over the last 20 years, like you already put so. Um, but one of the things that actually called out to me uh, was when you said that you, know, you talk to the students emotionally as well. Uh, and you know, there are things that you do that enriches and empowers them uh, emotionally uh, and then prepares them when they go to the... Um, um, the work. working world. So how do you do it? The most important thing I think is when someone goes to work, the first thing they need to understand is what do they go to work for? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Many people actually think that 9 o'clock to 5 o'clock is basically an interruption to their normal life. <laughs> do they? they? Interrupt their normal life, go to work, finish at 5 and resume their normal life after that. And that's not the way you need to lead life, you know. And uh, people talk about this work-life balance. You need a work-life balance when work is and life are very separate. Mm -hmm. But for, for people who are really successful at what they do, the, the lines between work and, and life are blurred mm -hmm. in some ways. You know? Hence. So you work at home and, you know, you go... 
to answer your question, how do you get people? What what is this emotional emotional intelligence? That's that's essentially what we're focusing on. My my work is all about emotional intelligence. It is about getting people to connect with their jobs on a day to day basis, making people understand what their own personal goals are in mm. life. You know, and once you know what your own personal goals are in life, you are able to then connect or align your personal goals with your organization's goals. Mm -hmm. See, if I was the CEO of a company, I will. I know that simply telling my staff, "Hey, you work for the best company in the world, and you should work much better." And why are you are not working so hard? What is the problem with you? Those kinds of things don't work anymore, because we live in a different world altogether. Mm -hmm. Whereas, if I went to my team and I said, "Do you know what makes you happy? You know what is it that you want in your life?" and I get you to explore that. And you say, okay, you know, Shankar, what makes me happy? Is A, B, C, and D. I get you to connect with that, right? Mm -hmm. And the moment you you are connected with that, I then say, how are you going to get there as a wage earner, for example? Mm -hmm. The only way you're going to get there as a wage earner is when you can actually align your personal goals with your organization's goals, which means being at X Y Z company, mm -hmm. being with EQ Training and Development, or being with Astro Awani or whichever organization you work for. Mm -hmm. That is that that organization becomes a vehicle mm -hmm. for me to explore my own potential. Ah, right. Okay, you I get know? it. I, I, clear picture. And that's uh -huh. the connection we're trying to make. Uh -huh. And that is the connection that's always missing in most organizations. Mm -hmm. People come to work. I only work here. Don't ask me any questions. You know, that's the kind of attitude that people have. Mm -hmm. So that's our training. That's essentially that's what I focus on, and that's what I do. And you know, I do this slightly differently than other. And, and I, I use my own personal example. Actually, if you ask me why I do what I do, I, I, I do it for one reason only. Mm -hmm. It's going to sound really weird. Go on, try us. I do it for Manchester United. Oh my God! Why? Why? It's really odd, isn't it? So if someone asks me that, I'll say like, I do it for Manchester United. People go like, what? What are you talking about? No, what is that going to do with your work? A long time ago, someone taught me this. Focus on what gets you excited. And I said and asked myself, what gets me excited? Traveling gets me excited. I love traveling. I spend, mm -hmm. a, I spend a lot of my uh, energy trying to find money so I can see the world. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. And the other thing that excites me, I was watching television one evening, watching Manchester United play whatever team. And I found myself jumping up and down, screaming and shouting at the television screen, which is what most ardent, die-hard football fans of, you know, whether you're a United fan or a Liverpool <laughs> fan, <laughs> or whether you are a Chelsea fan or whatever, whatever, yeah. whatever team that, uh, that you support, you know. You, f you find the passion. Online fights. People get upset when Manchester United play Liverpool's huge fight going on. No, I mean we are people who live ten thousand kilometers away from from. And I found that this is a passion. And this person I was talking to asked me, "Hey, have you been to Old Trafford?" And I'd been in England. I'd studied. I went to university there, but you know, I was a poor student. I didn't have money to go up to Manchester. I went to Sussex University in Brighton. Yeah. I didn't have money to travel up to Manchester at the time to go to watch United games. So in my my six years of living in in England, I'd never seen a, a Manchester United game, and mm -hmm. I was you know shame on me you know, at mm -hmm. the time. When I came here, this guy, this 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 person, this wise old person, was talking to me and he said, "Why don't you equate?" What, what do you, you know, he said, what makes you successful? Blah, 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 I was talking about it. He said, finally, he said, what, what, what is your passion? And after a while, I said, you know, Manchester United, I love watching United play. Right? And he said, have you seen Manchester United? Have you been to Old Trafford? I said, uh, no. And he said, shame on you. He said, until you, you, please don't tell me you're successful until you've gone to Old Trafford. And I said, what are you talking about? How can you make that kind of equation? He yeah. said, for, in order for you to go to Manchester, to Old Trafford, to watch Manchester United play, you need X amount of money. Mm -hmm. Quite Correct. a lot, actually. Yeah. Right? And if you have that money, if you have that spare money, then you've done well mm -hmm. in life. And I found that it is the weirdest thing I do now with my life. When I get up in the morning and sometimes I'm struggling to get up to go to work, like all of us, you know, I get to my class and I have 20 people in front of me and this visualization technique helps me. I look at all those people and I don't see Achong, Ahmad or Alim or whatever, you know. I see 25 or 30 Wayne Rooney sitting in front of me and immediately I'm, I'm, I'm jumping up and I'm ready to run my class. I'm, I'm all connected. Uh -huh. The point I'm trying to make is everything is emotional. Right. Uh -huh. There is nothing that we do in our lives which is unemotional. Mm -hmm. And people make this mistake. We are almost educated out of emotions. You know, if I tell you, hey, you know, you're a very emotional person. There's a negative connotation to that. 
Yeah, and because we, we, that's the way we are brought up to think. Yeah, yeah. Don't be emotional. Don't be emotional. You know, Unkauni very emo. You know, people will say things <laughs> yeah. like that. But everything we do is emotional. I'm passionate because I'm emotional. If you, if at the beginning, you know, when you spoke to me earlier, you said that, uh, that, that I'm, I'm, I'm very, a very good speaker. Mm -hmm. The very good speaker is not something that comes from learning or something that I'm born with alone. It comes from connecting with my passion. Mm -hmm. And when I connect with my passion, mm -hmm. I find that I speak well. I find that I present well. I mm -hmm. find that I have a better stage presence. And at first I thought, oh, it's like an acting thing. I, I'm, I'm able to act really well mm -hmm. when I'm on stage or when I'm in front or when I'm standing in the front in front of a class of whether it's 30 participants or, or 200 participants. And then I realized that it's nothing to do with acting. It is to do with actually believing every word I say. That, that you say. Uh, yeah, yeah, I completely agree. So, you know, one can only ask you what next? What is important is augmenting the work that I do right now which mm -hmm. is actually coming up with innovative ideas. I, I'm very passionate about being Malaysian. You know, I, 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 I have a partner is, who, is, who is European. Mm -hmm. I, and that gives me some options in terms of where I live. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but I have for a long time decided that I would like to live in Malaysia. I'd like to live in Malaysia because this is my home and this is my country. Uh, I would like to spend a lot of time working with people in the, in the, in the, in the services industry mm -hmm. in Malaysia to make Malaysia a bit more, to make the people who work in Malaysia a bit more connected to the jobs that they do. Mm -hmm. We need better people serving us in restaurants. We need yeah. better people serving us in the government services. I hear you, brother. We I need <laughs> much, much better people running the country. Uh, and that doesn't come with government and so on alone. That also comes with connecting with your passion. That also comes with all of us saying that, hey, we're proud to be Malaysian and I want to showcase. And the showcase is not just the makan makan that we showcase and all the beautiful places, but showcase our talent as mm -hmm. people. And, and, and if you ask me where the future is, that's where the future is for me to continue the work that I do, mm -hmm. to increase my capacity, my outreach, to reach more Malaysians, mm -hmm. um, and to build uh, emotional intelligence and EQ. Well, for the people. first time, you know, I can, I can, we, we, normally I'll end the interview with saying, you know, we, we look forward to uh, seeing more of you and uh, we wish you the very best of success. I definitely am wishing you the very best of success because if you achieve what you've just said, that means it's success for all of us. That's so, right. Shankar, thank you so much for your time. It's, it's a pleasure and thank you so much for having us in pleasure. your beautiful home. Pleasure. You've been with me, uh, Said Faridino Omar. And if you notice, this is the first episode again. This is, this is an episode of first. This is the first episode again where I didn't have to say much because the man himself speaks so well and so captivatingly I bet you were enthralled you've been watching in person you've been listening to Shankar Santaram of EQ uh, Training and Development and we hope to see you again next week take care bye bye